we thank God for our opportunity for this edition of Radiant Life. In the last edition, we brought you the topic that says Mononism Searching for Exaltation by Church of Jesus Latter day Saints. And today, in this edition, we are looking at Jehovah's Witness, a search for paradise. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for another opportunity to go through your word. Bless our hearts. May your grace that pass makes a difference renew our strength that we study this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our key verse today is taken from John chapter 1. Verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 1, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. One more time, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jehovah's Witness made some distortion that marks them different from what the Christianity is professing what believers believe in the bible they went and distorted the bible they made some minuses they removed some portions of the scripture and came up with a bible they called the new world translation in that bible they have some scriptures that are not in the mainstream bible and that is why the mainstream Bible scholars dissociated themselves from that Bible they are using presently. And that's why whenever you see them coming around for their evangelism, they, they will not be reluctant to open their Bible. Because if you, if you are not aware, you will not know that what is in their Bible is different from the mainstream Bible. The original Bible we, we know. And that has made their Christianity, their own Christianity and religion, they are doctrine different from the mainstream fellowship of Christians we know today. And how do you know the original from the fake? It's until you know the original. And that's why we encourage our young believers to study their Bible. Know what is written in the scriptures so that these end time prophets will not deceive you. What does the Bible say? In Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, the Bible says, be watchful in this end time be watchful because false prophets will arise to deceive many they will come like in sheep clothing to deceive many and in second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth that is for you, an ambassador of the kingdom. When you know the scriptures, they cannot easily deceive you. They mix errors and truth together. In that Bible, they carry along. And that's why we encourage our believers, our brethren, our students to please study your Bible. So that these end time prophets will not deceive you. Secondly, Jehovah's Witnesses as they are called in their organization, in their doctrine, doesn't believe on the Holy Trinity. I mean God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They don't believe on the Trinity. And remember, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the Holy Trinity. They trade in one. But general witnesses say that such a thing does not exist, that it is a teaching of paganism. And it was the teaching of paganism that it wasn't in the early church. It didn't begin in, at the early church. They don't believe in Jesus Christ as the son of the living God. They say that Jesus was the same angel Michael that was in heaven and came here on earth and became man and became flesh. And by so doing, they don't believe that Jesus died on the cross. They say that Jesus died on a stake like a thief as in the pagan religion. Of course, they are in the same way, they didn't believe that Jesus resurrected from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. Rather, they say that Jesus resurrected from the dead. 
in the spiritual, but did not appear on the physical. Look at such mix-ups. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit, according to them, is a, a, a mere spiritual force. Meanwhile, the Word of God said, Holy Spirit is a person. It's among the Holy Trinity. Look at what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, says the Lord. The Word of God confirms that Holy Spirit dwells in us. In our text today, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, from the beginning, from the beginning of creation, the word has existed. And in the, the Bible says, and the word became flesh. That's Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of mankind. He became flesh and he dwells among us. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, that those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. But Jehovah's Witnesses doesn't believe this because it's, it's not in their Bible. They don't believe it. It's not in their doctrine. And that is the demarcation between Christianity and the so-called religion they are professing. And that's why we want our students, Bible students, Christians, our young believers, to be aware of these discrepancies because they are using it to deceive many. Again, Jehovah's Witnesses doesn't believe on salvation and eternity. They have their analogies, they have their philosophy, they have their doctrine that heaven is for 144,000 that has been already earmarked. And they will always quote Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. That 144,000 have been earmarked for eternity in God's kingdom. You can imagine that. And that there's nothing like hellfire. That how can God give his only begotten, his children he created and, and send them to hellfire to burn? They don't believe that. Rather they say that hellfire will not exist. That at the end of age, it's those who doesn't believe, sinners who doesn't believe in their teaching as Jehovah's Witnesses, that they will just come to an end. God will find a way to end them and he let them. Make them never to exist anymore. And that hellfire will, is not in existence. And then heaven is for the one for the four thousand and the earth will become paradise for those who believe in their doctrine, Jehovah Witnesses. Fellow believer, I want to tell you that the word of God cannot be broken. In John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, Jesus gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, but as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of the living God. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, the Bible says, For our God is a consuming fire. It's for those who doesn't repent, who doesn't give their life to Jesus Christ. They will be consumed because our God is also a consuming fire. And in John chapter 14, verse 1, the Bible says, Be not troubled. Don't be troubled. I have gone to prepare a place for you. When I finish preparing a place for you, I will come and take you home. For where I am, there you will be also. And in verse 6 of John chapter 14, the Bible says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father, but through him but only through me, Jesus says. That is the gospel. That is all the gospel. And that's why we are encouraging you, brethren, believers of the word of God, that we should equip ourselves with the understanding of the scripture so that we can be able to overcome the falsehood of this end time. So that we will not 
fall into their pranks, into their analogies, into their human philosophies. But we should believe and align ourselves with the word of God. And the word of God will make a way for us. Jesus is coming again. And believers will end up in heaven, in his place, in his presence, where we shall be encouraged, where we shall die no more, where we shall not suffer anymore. And when you do this, when you obey the word of God, as you have had today, the Lord will continue to help you, continue to make you a victor, will continue to make you a good ambassador of the kingdom of God here on earth, and you shall not miss your reward. May the Lord bless us as we put all those in practice. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you for listening.